Happy Halloween, everybody. Hello, everyone. This is Sylvia, and it looks like you've all been tricked. <laughs> I bet you were expecting a Halloween-themed short film, which is kind of what I promised. <laughs> yeah, sorry. So, it's Halloween day. Like, I'm, I'm actually recording this on Halloween day. It's probably like 10 o'clock. So it's actually quite bright, you know, in the actual world. Nice candles. And... So yeah, um, I'm here, and I'm by myself, and uh, yeah, I have a few things to say, and so first of all, really sorry that uh, there's not going to be any sort of Halloween Sylviana Shaman show. We had this whole nice plan, we had this whole sketch thought out and everything that was going to advance the plot, and it was going to be great, and it was going to be cool, but our budget, like, plummeted. We had, like, $10, and then we went to $0, and we actually bought some nice, um, set pieces. We bought some cool stuff. And pull these out. And pretty nice stuff. We got some hay bales and some jack o' lanterns. Really, really cool stuff. The original sketch, and it was gonna be a lot better. We were trying to get all the pictures and all the backgrounds and stuff finished uh, a couple weeks ago, and then we found out that we, our printer, was being stupid, and we just couldn't, you know, get it at the quality we wanted, and it just looked really, really bad. And so we decided, hey, um, maybe we could try something else. And so for the past couple weeks, we've been trying to figure out something else we can do. So, um, yeah, instead, I'm actually going to tell you a story that happened to Claw yesterday. So this is an, an actual story of everything that you're about to hear is true, which is kind of a scary story. It certainly gave her parents a fright. <laughs> so, yeah, sorry, 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 I love you all. The wedding is still going to be going on, so don't worry about that. That video is still going to be going no matter what. But, yeah, really, really sorry for the Halloween video. Arr, we're so sorry. Um, before I do that though, before I tell you the story, Claw will be posting a video either really really late today or probably more over tomorrow um, about her trick or treating with her friend. Um, she was going to go with her Moira Maddie and her friend Mary, but um, Maddie canceled last second and so it's just going to be Mary and she's going to sleep over, it's going to be great and they're going to be cosplaying as Homestuck characters. So yeah, you're kind of going to be able to see her face, but she's going to be cosplaying as Jade so you guys will really be able to know what she looks like. Yeah, so that's gonna be like her first cosplay video. It's gonna be great. She's got an awesome cosplay for you guys to see. And she's gonna share her Halloween experience with you. So, on to that spooky story. It's not really spooky, but yeah, you get the point. It's kind of like scary for people involved, but surprisingly, the claw was very, very calm the entire time. So, alright, here's the story. Fell over. Alright, so the story that happened yesterday. So, yesterday was Friday, October 30th, 2015. And Claw went on a field trip. Now, she was invited to this field trip by one of the teachers who is the sponsor for the anime club, which she is a part of. So the teacher basically told the anime club, hey, I've got some spots left over for this um, field trip that I'm going with my other club, the Multicultural Club, um, and I have some space open, so here are some permission slips if you're interested in going. It's like, it's called Spiffs, it's in Vinoy Park, and it's like, um, it's a multicultural festival. And so they had like little booths and stuff. It was kind of like Epcot in the park. And that's how she described it. And so I thought, hey, this would be cool and I can get out of school, great. So it was like $25 and I paid the money, I put in my slip, everything, so everything was fine. And apparently none of the other anime club kids went. So I was the only anime club and person and everybody else, um, yeah, everybody else was from the Multicultural Club. So, uh, what happened was we got there, it was like an hour away from the school. So we drive in this bus for an hour, I'm in, I'm on the bus, I'm alone, I'm watching, um, the steam train play Undertale, which is a great game by the way, go play that game or watch somebody do it if you haven't already, it's great. Um, so I was basically just, you know, chilling. We get there, we're gonna leave at like 12, it's like 9 o'clock. So I've got a lot of time to spend all on my own doing whatever. And thank goodness that I brought lunch because everything there cost money and the food was costing money and I wasn't provided a lunch. So thank goodness that I brought lunch. So I kind of wander around, I look around a lot, you know, have a relatively okay time. And so, um, you know, I eat my lunch, everything's fine. So 
um, something happened to me and I got kind of upset. Uh, no one was mean to me or anything, there was just this guy being a jerk. And so I got upset, I left where I was. I went across the park and I stood by a tree. We were leaving, we were meeting at 12.15. And so there was one gate that I knew of that was, you know, there was a gate that was where we entered, which is the gate that I went to because I thought that was where we were meeting. Where we were meeting. And so I went to that gate and I stood by a tree and I stayed there for like 20 minutes and waited for it to be time to go. And uh, my phone's power was on like 30% at this point because the majority of the day was spent watching YouTube videos with the park's Wi-Fi because, you know, I didn't have any friends there, I didn't have any money, and after I ate I really didn't have anything else to do. So, you know, it was, it was still fun, it was better than going to Spanish class, so it was totally worth it the entire day. And so I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, and I see some other kids from the school who are also waiting in that area, and so I'm kind of hanging around them, just making sure I don't get, you know, lost. And they start walking off, and I'm like, I really should stay over here. They're not going to leave without me. She said that they'll just have to wait, and they'll come and find us if we're not, you know, at the bus. So I'm waiting, and I'm waiting, and I'm waiting, and I realize, okay, it's been like 15 minutes. It's like 12.30 now. I should probably start walking around. And so I think, wait, what if there's another gate on the other side of the park? So I run, run, run down to the other side of the park, and it's like at least a football field and a half. So I'm running, and I'm running. Sorry. <sighs> So I'm running and I'm running and I'm, there's like a lot of people there so I'm pushing through people, I'm trying to get past and around everybody. And I get there and we had the, the gate that we were supposed to meet at was pointed out before and I thought it was weird because the gate that I was waiting at was not the one they had pointed out but I didn't know where the other one was so I just kind of stayed there. This was the gate they had pointed out so I realized, ah oh, dang it I went to the wrong gate. And so I'm waiting around, I'm looking for everybody, they're gone and I'm like okay where are they, where are they, where are they and I'm kind of starting to get a little panicked. And I'm looking around, I'm waiting for them, I'm like, okay, where are they, where are these guys? And they weren't there. And there was the buses that were parked out to the right, so like, this is where I was, and the buses were out that way in the parking lot. And I kind of knew where our bus was, so I was thinking, I could go out there and try and find it. But the problem was is that our bus um, didn't have a number on it, so there was no way for me to tell what our bus was from everybody else's bus. So I kind of wait around until, like, I see what looks to be our bus, because there was like this one uh, sticker on the side that I noticed when we were getting on, and it was on that side, and I went, wait, is that our bus? And so I'm kind of waiting, and I'm looking, and I realize, yeah, that's, our, my, that's my bus. And so I walk to the security person, and I say, um, excuse me, do you know the protocol for what we're supposed to do if we think that we got left behind by our bus? And she's like, um, oh, sorry, I don't. Go to the volunteer tent. And so I went to the volunteer tent, and uh, they go out, and they look for Countryside's bus, and... Yeah, they left me. So, there I am, still at the park, and my school left me. So, the entire time the volunteers were very, very nice. They were very, very helpful. They helped me get everything that I could situated in, in a way that I was able to, um, we were able to get everything, you know, worked out smoothly. And so I called my dad three times, his phone was dead, so I called my mom at work and she called the police, she called the school, um, she called, she, I know she called 911, and like the police came by to make sure I was okay. And so basically I have to sit, I sit there for like an hour and a half, and my phone dies at some point throughout there, so I'm using the volunteers phones to get in contact with my mom. And the bus, they said the bus turned around for me, but then apparently it never actually turned around for me, so they lied. And so then these two chaperones who were with the bus, who had their own car, they turned around and they came back for me and they picked me up and brought me home. And so like I said, I had to wait for almost two hours for me to actually leave the park. And at some point my phone died and I was just bored and tired and it was hot out there. And I was just thinking, how could this have happened? Like, how could they have left me behind? So, I was able to get home safe, everything was fine. I was calm throughout the entire ordeal, completely calm, which was very surprising because I thought I would be panicking and crying and being scared, but I was panicked for a bit and then I went, okay, all right, it's fine. The worst case scenario is that you have to wait a bit longer and your parents can pick you up from work. Um, so, the, peop the women who drove me home were very, very nice. They were very apologetic. We had some great conversation on the way back. 
And just the volunteers were amazing. They were so, so nice and so supportive. And it was, it wasn't scary. I wasn't worried. I was never in any danger. And so I guess I had a good day. It was, it was fright for my parents. My mom was shaking. She was so scared. When I got home, she was so relieved. And so, yeah, it was crazy. But uh, it was certainly an adventure. And for the most part, it was actually quite fun. It, I find it more amusing than anything is that they left me behind. I always joke about how I'm invisible to people and how nobody sees me, nobody knows me. This actually proves I am legitimately invisible. <laughs> you can't hear my voice in a crowd. You can't see me in a crowd. It's, it's really funny, actually. I find it more. And that's how I deal with it. It's, it's more funny than anything. So that's, I guess, a story for you guys since I can't, since we couldn't make a Halloween video. I'm so, so sorry. But, um, Claude's gonna be uploading that Halloween video tomorrow of her trick-or-treating. So, yeah. Have a great day. Have an awesome Halloween. And get plenty of candy. Bye! <laughs> Oh, my God.